Welcome back, everyone, to TNO, the last days of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mokulover, or Italian Mokulover, which right now, we have a slight crisis in Algeria. We've got some comms to go through, but let's continue with the reports from the SIM. Aerial photographs, intercepted radio transmissions, decrypted messages, and even reports from the Tureg nomadic clans, the Servizio Informazioni Militari is already hard at work at in Algeria. While regular army troops and units are preparing to intervene in the region, agents of the SIM are already active deep behind the border, gathering intel that will help us react to whatever the Iberians are up to. While the prospect of an all-out war remains unlikely, everything should be ready, just in case. And things are falling apart. Serbia is killing itself. Ah, uh, feels good, doesn't it? Alright, so for, for the current leader, project being decided upon, and... Ah, uh, reports from the SIM. We're running out of time. The intel gathered by the SIM confirmed that we had come to fear. The Iberian Union is indeed gathering men and equipment in the Algerian region, mostly in the shape of an armed settler militias and other irregular troops. Now... A rift has opened between two different factions in the Italian government and military. Many believe that this is clearly the prologue to a large-scale offensive, as Iberian settlers and their French allies are trying to seize the entire country for themselves. Governor General Castellano urges an immediate reaction, potentially one that will be able to repel the Iberians from Algeria entirely. On the contrary, some argue that the Iberians are expecting an Italian offensive, and thus are mobilizing to defend the country. Thus, a diplomatic resolution to the crisis is still possible. The ENI representatives in the country are especially worried about the prospect of a war, which would immensely harm oil extraction operations in the region which would obviously not be very good now would it and everything is falling apart and i love it i love it when things fall apart it gives more credibility to radical ideas right that you gotta love it right the south african war because that just makes for good times or maybe maybe not good times but interesting times for history books all right let's go and test our work as well as well as waiting for here and anything else that we really care about not really no all right, so I asked you guys yesterday whether we should take Castellano or to call Perini, because I don't remember the last time I did something here. Offers they can't refuse. Uh, brief the Eximus. Desert Rats. Rev up those engines. Operation Jugurtha. And most of you guys did say that I did go down the this path last time, so... It, you guys recommend we go down and call it Parani. So, the Algerian region has always been of special interest to Enrico Matai to the ENI. For its vast and mostly untapped oil resources. For this reason, ENI's chairman has dispatched to Algeria one of his most trusted aides, Mario Parani Cohen. An economist and journalist suspected for his anti fascist sympathies, Parani was taken under Matai's protective wing and made into his right hand man for Algerian affairs. Parani's numerous contacts within the FLN are prominent diplomats on the Iberian side, especially from Portuguese ambassador Mate Malberto, Alberto Moera, has become one of the most outspoken advocates for a diplomatic resolution to the Algerian crisis. By negotiating with Parani's help, we might avoid a pointless war and find much more profitable and convenient solutions. And additionally, we would do a native diplomacy. While we've managed to f find a detente with the front of de Liberation Nationale, the main organization advocating for the Algerian independence, our relationship is still far from being in good or decent way. The first step to ensure a lasting peace with Iberia is to make sure that the Algerian people is on board with it. Many of them <clears throat> see both Italy and Iberia as colonizers. So we must reinforce our promises and commitment to an Algerian independence and democracy. By ensuring that Algerians have a seat at the negotiating table will make the peace process much easier and stronger. You know what I also love? More importantly, instead of democracy, as a fistful of oil. To entice the Iberians in this into sitting at the negotiating table with us, we must use some rather convincing arguments, and oil's most convincing argument of them all. Only ENI has industrial and financial extraction infrastructure in Algeria, as Iberia simply lacks the industrial raw power necessary to set up a large-scale operation. The Iberians could cooperate us, cooperate with us, and get a share of oil profits while at the same time avoiding a pointless war. If we're going to have war, it better be for a good reason, and this reason isn't good enough. Promises of prosperity? Uh, promises of freedom. Freedom, I prefer oil. Spoken like a true American. Ah, very good. Thank you very much. And we should. Ooh, we can't do that yet. So let's do promises of freedom first, though. Our Algerian projects are supported by an important name, Masali Hajj. A longtime advocate who campaigned for independence from Algeria was under French rule. Hajj is often called the father of Algerian nationalism. After World War II, Hajj accepted Italian control of Western Algeria as a counter to Iberia's expansion plans over the region, especially considering that the Iberian authorities have always maintained a good relationship with the numerous Pied Noir militias that stalk the country. By using Hajj as the spokesperson, Man for the projects to return to independence to Algeria, we will be able to gain popularity among the Algerian people, thus increasing our credibility and our clout in the upcoming negotiations. Wow, we got all of our research done at the same time. What a coinky dink. 
It's almost 1964, so that's not too bad. Let's grab as much APC stuff as possible, just because, well, we obviously have the slots for it. Cut down some of our debt. We're feeling pretty good about that. And a fistful of oil with promises of freedom, and then we'll do promises of prosperity. Because prosperity is always nice, and we have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and warm. Okay, never mind. It's not warm. It's hot. Ooh! All right, my friends, and let's just do promises of prosperity as we started flirting with the Albarians. Ooh, regarding the immense profits that could be had by both countries and avoiding a war. It's time to further reinforce this by escalating our offers. Well, it's true that the ENI possesses large enough materials or power to set up shop in Algeria, the region would likely suffer from a shortage of workers as the oil reserves are located in desertic and remote areas. Bringing workers from Italy would be costly and time-consuming, but there's already numerous Iberian citizens living as, as settlers in Algeria. By drafting large-scale employ plans to allow Iberian settlers to work in ENI wells and pipelines would foster economic cooperation between the two countries, making both richer in the meanwhile. We can always find a solution to our problems through economics. Well, maybe not always, but a lot of the time. <clears throat> Depending on the my developer. Promises of peace, though. With the Algerian Republic public opinion, largely in favor of a peaceful solution to the crisis, and numerous voices on the Iberian side now arguing for the same thing, it's time to formally present our plans for a stable peace in Algeria. According to the plan drafted by Parani and Moera, and to which the Duce has already con consented to, Algeria will be ruled as a joint mandate. So European settlers and native Algerians will be both represented in the new government, as Italian and Iberian armed forces will watch over the country with a long-term goal of establishing a free and independent Algeria for now. Extend the olive branch, though. The prospect of a war in Algeria simply isn't attractive to us, and we've made it clear to the Iberian side with extremely convincing arguments. In a joint statement, Parani and Moira have called for a conference in Pal Palma de Mallorca with the aim of resolving the Algerian situation in accordance to the mandate plan. We made our attempt to preserve peace in the Mediterranean, and we can only hope that the Iberians are as reasonable as we have been. And I'm ready to take out Croatia. Let me at him. Let me at him. I'm ready to take him out. Uh, oh, that's not good, Hydrish. That is, you're probably the best bet to defend against those guys, so. Oh boy. Oh, Himmler's not doing great. Kingdom of England's doing okay. And now, is the crisis over yet? I don't know. Uh, let's see. Someone recommended in the comments from yesterday's video that we should save, should have saved this campaign for later because TNO Italy is going to get a, probably a big rework. And there's also, uh, at the time of this recording, teasers for what's coming. Uh, the reason I did it early, this earlier because it was voted on my Discord server in December of 2020. So they recommended I play as Democratic Italy. I failed to do that. I played Fascist Italy first, but now I came back to play Democratic Italy, Italy, and I will play Italy again in the future. Don't get me wrong. Like, Italy, it's... I don't know. For some people, it's their favorite faction to play as. For some people. Maybe not a lot of people. I don't know. It's not mine, but because of the update in the future, I will play as them again. Maybe a few times. So, that'd be cool. Uh, let's see. Kuwait? Well, let's finish off working Kuwait. Uh, is that worth it? Regions develop with further, further development to available. So here's what we're going to do. It says it's further developments are available, even though this says nothing. If this doesn't give us anything, then we'll know for a fact that this does nothing, so I think that will be okay to do. And which we will discover more, hopefully, more oil reserves and stuff like that. Someone also recommended that I go a social democrat and don't abolish the monarchy, or the military will coup us. Now, if they had a unique focus tree, I'd be more interested in the coup, maybe, but hey, look at that. Nice. Not bad. And we defuse the Algerian crisis. Ah, a feast. Well, a feast of our diplomacy. Actually, I remember before cutting room patch G that we're currently on, that these guys actually had a unique focus tree, but it was taken out. Which I was going to play as soon as I heard that, but then it was already taken out, so. Big sadness, I know. But let's go do... Ooh, not that one. I believe we were trying to do this one first. If you'd like to read about this, go right ahead. I already read this in the last video. But, obviously, it canceled once the Algerian crisis transpired. It is what it is, and I believe I also additionally read Winning Over Them Fascists as well, so if you'd like to read about this one again, please go right ahead. So, the final lord, as Greece has been gripped by chaos and its partisan groups wreak havoc and coming closer and closer to seizing control of this country with every day that passes, the collaborated government is equally worried as, as we are and sought the protection of the Italian garrisons in and around Athens at, in combination with the security of Italians, are the last hope that for our allies to maintain control. However, even that chance is slipping away. After months of endless fighting, our troops are being constantly assaulted, ambushed, and routed. Attica is the only true stronghold we can rely on. Even though occasional rumors of partisans carrying out resistance activity in the suburbs of the capital reached Rome, the area still remains the only one we hold safely. Thus, we must take our decision on what our response will be. The High Commissioner of Greece, Luigi Mascherpa, who represents our interests he there, has remained neutral on the issue so far, waiting for a response from the government, but he seems to possess a better understanding of the situation on the ground. The Honorable Admiral and his closest advisors have debated the best course of action for days now, with little seems 
to have come out of it, though. As the national resistance closed in on the capital and threatens the, and the EEE government, an immediate order to the Italian garrison must be sent. What shall it be? Surrender your weapons to the resistance fighters? We're going to get options here. Open fire? I'd like to open fire, but we got to go this way. So, it is what it is. And happy 1964, everyone. Hope you're having a great year. I hope you're having a tremendous year. Many of the parties. Oh, bad the second was tired, but uh, happy. As he sat down and had something to eat, dinner alone for the first time in days, he reflected on the meetings with the political factions of the past few days. All those who came to meet him had been respectful, and, with a couple exceptions, seemed intelligent enough. The monarchists were, as expected, almost embarrassingly earnest in the professions of undying loyalty. The Christian Democrats were particularly interesting conversation partners, generally soliciting their, his views on a number of issues and providing their own ideas. Aldo Moro had something of a radiant quality about him, with a quiet confidence of a man who knows that he's a favorite to lead his country into democracy. The socialists were more courteous than he expected, with P Pietro Nenny speaking at length and then observing the king carefully for his reaction. Umberto was under no illusions as the Republicans among the ranks, but Nenny artfully steered the conversation elsewhere when the king raised the issue of, of Almirante, with his ties to the PNF and his known views, did not know what to make entirely, or what, what to make entirely, yeah. That, yet the man was charismatic, even if he was the quietest of all the politicians he had spoken with over the past few days. Umberto could be proud, could be proud of what he achieved. It would be dem would democratize. Whatever there are aggressive elements along the PNF had to say about it, and that he would be there to see through it. A firm hand to lead to Italy's freedoms. Very, very good. And look, one, two, three, four, five, plus five plus. Not bad as we're working on our departments here, and putting down resistance in our new team. Tames? Games. The talks begin behind closed doors and dark alleys. They are talks of a final peace between the Italian Empire and the Greek resistance, having, once having to hide behind the mountains and the woods. The partisans of the EDES and the EAM have nothing to fear anymore. They have not only opened engaged in a war of liberation, but now can claim to be the legitimate government of the nation. <clears throat> they have done that. In fact, as a provisional national democratic government has been formed in the Greek mountains, before any power and influence Italy can exert on its former ally and forever, Duce Sianos, it is said it is time to actually hold negotiations on its future. As their best diplomats work day and night to conduct contact the provisional government and begin talks, our formal conference must be arranged for to sign lasting peace. Many ideas have been thrown around at the location of the conference, and it has now become a question of whether we want to have the upper hand by holding it somewhere we control, or hold it on Greek land. Well, where should we organize it? Government building in Athens, in a battleship Vittorio Venetia, in the port of Piraeus, and Lacana military base in Crete. I think let's do the Crete one. That'd be kind of cool. Following this one, though, we did want to do for support reformists. Winning over the upper levels of the party simply isn't enough. We have to make sure that every position of some importance within the fascist systems, from members of the Grand Council to fascism, to the simple podestas of towns and villages across Italy, subscribe to our deals and to our vision for Italy. We simply won't be able to act on our promises if we're at risk of being stopped in our tracks by our own party. It won't be easy nor quick, but we have to initiate a nationwide campaign to push reformists and followers of the Duce all over the nation, thus putting friendly and cooperative men at all levels of our administration and address to the Grand Council. Galizio Siano smiled with his mouth, but not with his eyes. He came into the chamber with King Umberto, and as the men present stood to attention, Siano paid notice to the way they addressed the monarch, bowing their heads slightly as they shook his hand or made, making eye contact. The respect for the king or lack thereof would make a big difference in their opinion of what Siano had to say. At best, everyone present would go along with what he said, and at worst, they would have to leave the room with reservations, which would set things back significantly. <coughs> The teacher spoke at some length, going over the talking points presented to him by the king. This democratization would be complex and fragile, even the systems and handover to be put in place, f because, to his knowledge, no country had ever transitioned from fascism to democracy. Verona had changed things for the better, Siano said to the men present, tr w trying to will himself to believe it. He had the full support of the king in saying so. And to continue things as they were before would be to risk a continuing stagnation and the dissolution of Italy's status in the world, rendering it as a secondary power forever to be picked by, uh, by greater nations. Something had to be given, and that was something that, that something was a fascist system designed by Mussolini for a long time, long past. Siano scanned the faces of the audience. An Amenatore fan Fanfani's eyes gleamed as he listened. The man's smiling was, my, smile was unnerving. He was not alone, and many of the presents nodded solemnly. I looked on, unmoved, with faces which yet betrayed disappointment, but not surprised, yet no one interrupted. Once he was finished, he had given a few curt instructions. The Duce followed King Umberto out of the room, out of earshot of the others. The king grasped his hands on his own. Well done, he said simply, beaming. Siona returned the smile. Yet once more, it was in his mouth, not his eyes. May sleepless nights come. <laughs> Discredit the extremists. More attack and defense. Basic training of combat schooling. Question of the prisoners. Not bad. 
For years, our endless struggle with the Greek resistance, aside from little success in dealing with them, this war has also given us a great number of captives that are housed prisoners in mainland Italy or Greece. Whether they are Republicans, Communists, Monarchists, they all want to get their freedom back and return to their homeland, and so does the victorious resistance. Perhaps we shouldn't be so quick about returning them, as it could still be a bargaining chip in negotiations. Talks between the Italian government and the United Greek Front of rebels continue, and it is in our best interest to have a high ground in negotiations, or at least that's what some claim. Many others have also voiced their support for showing goodwill to our new regime in the Balkans by releasing them, or at least promising them to do so soon. Our, the best course of action is to be cited by expert in foreign affairs under leader Duce Siano. We should immediately make a promise to release them once the talks are done. We'll do that one. I'll just grab this extremist so we get some more army professionalism. Perhaps even more insidious than the scores of this faction, the followers of the Faranacci. Faranacci. The German lapdog creep in the underbelly of our party, crawling among us. Even though they do not associate themselves with the violent acts of the Black Brigades, we know that some members of the PNF still informally support Farnacci and his band of Nazi fanatics. Even Mussolini was a fierce critic of Germany, and we all know that fascism and Nazism are completely different ideologies that only ally out of mutual convenience. Italy should never fall into the claws of that crooked, anti-Semitic, and violent system that has brought so much misery and suffering to Germany and all of Europe. We must take every opportunity to condemn these filthy wannabe traitors. Oh, wow who lurk among our ranks and would love to see Italy as a subservient puppet to the Reich. We won't just use our propaganda to discredit them, but we shall also expel them from the party with this honor and jail their leaders for ideological treason to make sure that they stop once and for all and, and peddling their Nazi poison once and for all, of course. EAM wraps up activities? The EAM has made itself a tourist to the Italian forces station in Greece. Created by the Communist Party at the very start of the occupation, AIMS was to become a popular front that would unite all ideologies to achieve a common goal of the nation's liberation. This was never achieved as most of the center and right looked to alternatives such as EDS to join. However, that did not stop the EAM from growing more and more, becoming the first resistance organization to shift from a small circle of select units and guerrillas to a nationwide movement that encompassed every corner of the country. The fall of the collaborationist regime in Athens changed the situation dramatically as a socialist organization is free to continue building up troops and influence of the government. This has made some people in the cabinet and the army rather worried, even afraid that it puts a carefully built order in the Balkans in danger. Recently, we were approached by a group named the Sacred Bond of, German, of Greek officers, also known as IDEA. They are a group of ambitious military commanders in the mess that is currently the Greek army, and they have dedicated themselves to fighting communism. They have been the ones to inform us of the latest EAM operations and have been even offered to help in the investigation. The troops of the National Liberation Front, especially active in the mountainous areas of Greece, has amassed significant support and possibly preparing for an offensive, both literally and figuratively, to seize control of the provisional government. The Servizio Informazioni Militare has been assigned to find information regarding this threat, but has found nothing so far and would require deployment in Greece to figure out what's going on. At the same time, IDEA still wishes to lead the charge into the investigation without raising too much suspicion. Under SIM, use valuable resources on something more important than this. Contact IDEA. I think that'd be good. Let IDEA deal with it. They know it better. That's their homeland. So. Not bad for Anno Deficit, I would say. A lot of factories. Obviously not enough, but we're getting there. After we discredit extremists, what are we going to do? A supportive army? Oh, yeah. Traditionally, our armed forces have always been divided between supporters of fascist reforms and traditionalists more tied to mon monarchical institutions. This divide between supporters of the king and the duchy has been now much reduced in its severity, as it appears clear that Siano is perhaps also thinking to an aristocratic upbringing. It has managed to create a relationship of mutual trust with the king, sometimes which always escaped the grasp of Mussolini. For this reason, and the recent rebuke of the more radical fascists, which have o have always been more hostile towards the Savoia, the officers and generals of the Regio Esercito seem to be more and more supportive of Siano, which is a great thing in military presence in Greece. Oh, boy. As negotiations continue between Rome and the United Greek Front insurgents, a tough question has been set by the other party. What shall be the fate of the Italians' presence in the country? Ever since the Second World War, when the Italian troops completed the glorious invasion, dozens of military bases, installations, and outposts were established, with the goal of protecting the collaborationist regime from both internal and external threats, and maintaining fact or order in general. Obviously, this mission has failed, as evident by the fact that we are currently negotiating with a new regime that overthrew our allies. Still, the question of what our garrison force will do once Greece gains its full independence remains. The Greek negotiators have been quite insistent on Italian withdrawal from the soil, but there is still much room for deciding the exact details of that. For example, High, Com High Commissioner Mascherpa Mar Mar suggested a program by which Italian military presence will be reduced to 30% to its original size. This way, we might be able to appease the provisional government, but still maintain some troops there. Of course, there are always more extreme options. All over here, significantly reduce reduce our pet presence how about we do that significantly reduce our presence and we have six days less than a week for really helping out our apcs actually our tank divisions do they use apcs yeah they do it's not very much though i don't mind increasing their combat width and we should have enough for this now all right so in kuwait the region has been fully developed which i don't know if we got any benefit from that at all but at least it says fully developed so that's cool right all right so after that high reserve tapped fully developed iraq can we actually improve it any further? Well, let's see. How about Libya? 
Finish off work in Libya. Uh, prospect for Sudan. I want I want things that actually give us stuff. Improved Egypt. Egypt has what? Oil. I don't see Egypt here though. Algeria, Albania, Transjordan, Croatia, East Africa, Croat, Greece, Iraq, Libya, North Sudan, Oman, Palestine, Persian Gulf. There's not Egypt here, but we're going to improve it anyways because they get some more stuff, which is nice. Alrighty, tidy. That's a little bit ahead of time. Let's finally do some more gun stuff, shall we? I love gun stuff. Support weapons three. Let's grab some large thingamabobs. And let's grab some improved motorized equipment. Sounds good to me. A supportive army. A democratic front. Ah, oh, the Cyprus question. The islands of Cyprus, which has a Greek majority population, was awarded a Hellenic state with the conclusion of the Second World War. It could be considered a comp compensation given by Italy in exchange for the territorial losses the nation experienced, but now the drastic changes in the mainland Greece have made the Cyprus question service in international affairs again. Their delegation, with which we were negotiating with, was one to bring up the matter of the island, citing that it was technically Greek land, even though in reality the Italian garrisons held most of the power. Their proposal was the maintenance of Enosis, the term for the union with Cyprus as a concession by El Duce. What we've mentioned as a counterpoint is a great difference between the situation there and the Gre in Greece itself. While the Partisans have seized control of the mainland, Cyprus is still firmly under our control. Even though the EOKA, the radical group advocating for Enosis, has intensified its activities as a result of the victory of the resistance, it has not been enough to force us to evacuate. Although the possibility of a democratic plebiscite has also been considered by the diplomats of both countries. A referendum organized jointly and held under the supervision of the Gerson seems like a good middle ground and would assure a commitment to our liberty and justice. However, we should keep in mind that if the Cypriots are given a choice between seeing the Empire joining Greece, the majority would likely vote for the latter. As a concession, uh, well, let's uh, let's organize the plebiscite. I think that's kind of cool. What is old is new again. Uh, for the troops, Slavnos influence, political power. I'm looking for anything large spending. Oh boy, <clears throat> I'm looking for anything that gives us more societal improvement. GDP growth rate. We get minimum trinket wage. That oh, I don't want to do that. People want minimum wage. We trinket minimum wage with low minimum wage. That hurts us. That hurts our max factories. I'm not doing that. People don't need that low minimum wage. What are they talking about? National blocks. Everything will be okay. Well, we'll do what old is new again. Democracy in Italy has been an ancient tradition. Before the rise of fascism, the Italian state was a democratic constitutional monarchy for decades. Italians are still taught about the great man who built Italy from the ground up. Great men such as Cavour, Crispi, huh. Giolo, Gioliti, De Pritis, Sonino, and many more. We should make sure to remind the population of the great things democracy has done for our country and of our democratic tradition. Italy isn't synonymous with a dictatorship, and with a bit of hope, Siano will be remembered not as a dictator, but as a man, a great man of the state. For our troops, though. For our army, our army is the backbone of our empire in the Mediterranean and Africa. We know it, and the army knows it, and our subjects know it very well, too. For this reason, it is imperative that we start a massive reorganization and modernization of our army, especially in the fields of strategy, tactics, and logistics. Counterinsurgency special operations will be prior towards in order to strengthen the hold on the colonies, while at the same time cutting the blow to expenses necessary to garrison our vast territories, and a renewed logistics network to help increase our power projection across the Mediterranean and in Africa. Finally, we should begin to educate the black shirts into the army, in order to turn the MVSN from a constant source of trouble and embarrassment for the fascist into a useful tool for our armed forces. In addition, we'll have a democratic front. During the negotiations with the various prominent rising liberal factions of Italy, a new moderate leftist front solidifying around Pietro Nenni, as we had hoped, calling itself Democratic Front or Fronte Democratico. The new coalition reunited moderate leftists and social democrats and reformists who wished to see Italy become a free and fair country where the poor are watched over by the state and er everyone's freedoms and security is guaranteed. Already drawing the ire of the national blocs and other conservatives, this new democratic front is steadily becoming more and more popular among the working classes, the students, and intellectuals of the country, as it presents a moderate leftist alternative to communism radicalism. Communist radicalism, I should really say. There you go. Let's go ahead and fund the project. And after that, for the people, why not? Propaganda is all well and good, but we need more than that to convince the people of our intentions. We must not give only the impression that the fascist government is simply abandoning the people to itself. The statement must be made that every single thing Siano does, he does it for the good of the Italian people. Thus, we will prepare the way for a few more executive orders coming directly from the Duce. This will also be an occasion to further appease the factions which are forming in the country, but we will have to carefully decide what to do exactly, for we know it's impossible to please everyone. The Democratic Front's hopes. The left bloc is ready. For 40 years, they have survived on nothing but the hope of eventually abandoning fascism and establishing a workers' government in Italy, and now that fascism is withering away, they see this as a matter of fate. Their leader, Nenni, has modernized his socialist views to become more acceptable to the middling body of Italian electorate. Time will tell whether this strategy will pay off, and whether the renewed hopes of the socialists, some of who have only returned from exile recently, will bear fruit. The workers of Italy hold their breath. Oh boy. Oh, look at this. We do it again. I love it. Test our work. And coffee. Ah, how are we already 24 minutes into this video? How is that possible, man? How is that possible? Now, let's see. Let's do Yemen, because nothing ever ha bad happens in Yemen.
Survey for a project? Well, we already did that one, so. Well, maybe not. Okay, there we go. Cool. For the people. Ooh. More political power. We lose ability by dissolving the OVRA. So far, the OVRA has been a useful tool in the hands of the fascist state. It was largely thanks to them that the clandestine anti-fascist activity ceased during Mussolini's period as Duce. And they've also proved their worth in a recent hunt for the Brig Brigata Rossa. However, having a shady, well-funded organization that operates in the darkness and answers to almost no one isn't exactly a good thing for a functioning democracy. The rumor that many OVRA members have connections with the remnants of the radical factions of the PNF doesn't help. For this reason, we greatly we will greatly reorganize the OVRA, increasing their transparency of their operations and turning them from a secret police into a reformed and more efficient security, surveillance, and intelligence agency integrated with the Servizio e Formazioni Militari, our milita military intelligence organization, followed with a moderate left. How about a moderate left? Once we have this lag done with. Cool. Over the course of the decades, numerous left-wing politicians were persecuted, imprisoned, and humiliated by the fascist regime, with numerous being killed. Many fled, Italy, many fled Italy to escape the terror of the OVRA, and most of them still uh, abroad. While some were Bolsheviks or communists, the vast majority of them were moderate leftists or social democrats. Underground communist movements are so present in the country, and after democracy is introduced, we risk a rising tide of radical leftism. However, there's something we can do to mend this. If we allow the creation of a moderate leftist party to comp compete in the democratic race, we will create a powerful barrier to radicalism. A problem Exiled politician Petrito Nini Neni could be useful to his goal, and he'd make a fine leader for this new moderate left. The tensions boil over, though. The uneasy calm was settled after the Ustase rebellion in Croatia has finally ended. Despite overwhelming diplomatic pressure on the ultra-national state, they made it clear that they shall not bend to Italian hegemony. Our diplomatic agents have been entirely rebuffed, and all former diplomatic channels have been cut. Due to our current security position, this is absolutely unacceptable. In order to secure our empire, one thing is for sure, Croatia's newfound independence must come to an end. With all the other options seemingly impossible, we've been forced to wield our military might and end this threat. The Regia Esercito has already been, seen, or been notified, and the full-scale mobilization along the Croatian border has begun. Our plan is simple, but solely effective. We shall use our overwhelming superiority to break through Croatia's lines and capture the major cities, leaving them no choice but to surrender. Through combined arms offensive, we shall leverage our advantage into the air as well, see, ensuring that the newly established front will quickly buckle under the overwhelming pressure of the Italian might. So I'm worried that the break of the triumvirate may cause a distraction of our armed forces, but it shall most likely only serve to motivate our soldiers to hasten their attack. Well, I guess it's time. Ah, a little bit of war never hurt anybody. Well, maybe I shouldn't say that stuff like that, but, you know, you get the idea. Oh, we got more political power. Look at that. Well, if that's the case, high oro reserve tap, so this would be completely useless then. Uh, Croatia, Greece. Who else do we have? Persian Gulf. Persian Gulf. Well, I want to get more stuff. Let's do the South Sudan because we get more infrastructure. I think that'd be kind of nice, right? Oh, we have no fuel, which kind of probably hurts our abilities to wage war, doesn't it? Well, then again, I guess not. Um, we've lost nobody versus 2,200 people. Oh, now we're going to lose a few people. That's alright, though. Uh, you guys just go around here and just take them out that way. Strong Zagreb. And burn it to the ground. If you can. Of course, if you can. Uh, a few hundred... Well, I haven't lost anybody yet. 3,000? 3,200? Not bad. <clears throat> Help out here if you can. Hopefully this doesn't last too long. And we should be... Oh, we were going to go this way, huh? Alright, you go there and you go there. Cut them off. There you go. Oh, another spy. Fabrizio Fellow Marino. Cool. Good job, guys. You cut them all off. And then crack down on the Reds. Radicalism is the greatest threat to any nascent democracy in Italy's no exception with the tacit support of the moderate leftists. We'll begin a final crackdown on the Red Brigades and other subversive communist movements in the country. Arrests, interrogations, and investigations will hopefully lead us to disseminate or dismantle the secret cabals and cliques that are so present throughout Italy. The most powerful elements is the clandestine PCDL. Arresting its leader, Oronato Damen, would be the ultimate victory against radical communism in Italia. Ah, I love peacekeeping operations. A little taste of combat never hurt anybody. Well, maybe I shouldn't say that either. Oh yeah, Bulgaria's in our faction too. Because we were successful. Muy successful. I don't think they say muy. That's much. Molto, right? Molto successful. Molt? Molto? Gods of the North. And actually, who says they defeated? Great! Actually, we even gave them a port. They still have the port. To, to the Adriatic. Well, what was the Adriatic? Very nice, 
and then a political military budget, bringing it all together. Even across the country, many key fascist politicians, even those who have always support, been supportive of Sion, are expressing their worry. They fear that after Sion's democratic reforms, the fascist spirit will vanish from Italy, and that the ideas of fascist revolution of Mussolini and of the heroic black troops will be a mere footnote of the history books. The issue is that they will be alienated and left out of the political sphere. We must convince them that they need to worry. The flame of Italian fascism will live on forever. Sure, in the past, there have been a whole lot of conflicts and violence between fascists and anti-fascists, but... All of that is in the past, and we, are able, and we are all patriotic Italians. We must convince the right-wingers that there will still be a space for them and their ideals in the Italy of, of the future, as long as they're willing to play by the rules of democracy. What? We're to play by rules? What? What is this? this that's corruption. All right, I don't even care what it is. There you go. Improved Tunisia? I think that's great. These focuses are very, very short. We're still spending a lot of time with them. Let's do pro-democracy propaganda. If we wish to give Italy the change it deserves, simply changing a few laws and budget priorities won't be enough. Having an election is no, of, of no use if no one shows up to the polls because they simply don't care about democracy, or those who count the votes rig the elections in favor of their preferred candidate. While we know that the people of major urban centers are in favor of democratization, Italy is still far largely rural country, and we must make sure that in every town, village, and hamlet in the country, the conditions are set for the free and fair voting. To do this, we should begin a massive propaganda campaign through every channel available, radio, newspapers, TV, and more, to turn the people's attention towards the future, or towards the that soon they will be made to bear the weight of the country's future. A round table parties, how about that? Ooh. Thank you. Well, Siona rubbed the tiredness from his eyelids and looked up. If there's nothing more to add, he said, I propose that we bring this meeting to a close, and thank you, gentlemen, for agreeing to come here on such short notice. But someone cleared his throat, and Siona raised his head wearily. Would you like to speak? The person who interrupted did speak at length, and Siona actively stopped himself from nodding along. It was a grand old man representing the PNF interests, though not a party man himself. The Democratic leaders at that, at this meeting, uh, only parties intending to run for the election and civil servants of importance could attend. This had led to the awkward situation of a group of nominally independent civil servants speaking in defense of the PNF. In any case, the PNF's man rambled on. He spoke about the threat to stability of moving too quickly and throwing out the good of fascism with the bad and letting it down the hard-working members of the civil service through an important imperfect democratization. So you remember the king and held his tongue. He was here to mediate, and there was determined not to give any of the blocks to the right wingers, Christian Democrats, or the left, cause to say he had been unfair. See, I know sympathetic to the gentleman's points, he said carefully. Certainly, democratization would not occur at any cost and would not throw away everything of use. It was certain that the party leaders agreed also on this. Siano felt them get angsty, with Nenny bursting to speak. Yet they would not, should not be afraid, added Siano quickly, to strike forth. No democratization process could be perfect, and that should not strain their will to make the necessary change. With respect to the esteemed gentleman, who he knew to be an excellent leader of men and servant to, to his country, there would be no change to the plans. Siano felt an audible shudder as he said this. He was starting to sound like the king. The king himself congratulated him after the meeting, though through his private secretary. Do you know that short-sighted to hold back what is best for your country, said the man to him before slipping away. The duty returned to his office, finding the lingering uncertainty in his gut, and shut the door. Just 15 minutes before the next meeting. Oh, good lord. That sucks, man. That really sucks. Fighting common ground, though. <clears throat> the fascists and Democrats often make two different but opposite mistakes. The fascists are wrong in thinking that the original fascist system set up by Mussolini and the Black Church is perfect and should never be changed. The Democrats are wrong in forgetting that if it weren't for Mussolini and his Black Church, Italy would probably have been a stomping ground for German boots. Fascism wasn't a perfect system, but it was necessary for its time. We should strive to change and reform it, but without ever forgetting our past. After a long round of negotiations at the Viminal Palace, uh, important fascists and fascists and democratic representatives left the building smiling, shaking hands, convinced that they can simply agree to disagree on most things, and then that one thing that truly matters is a patriotic duty towards a great country. Just give up your ideals and just do whatever you want. Well, maybe not do whatever you want, but, you know, just give up your ideals and go along with whatever we say. Cool, finding common ground. Uh, support the civilians? Nope. I'd rather have a military biased budget. <clears throat> If we want to have any hope in maintaining our hegemony in the Mediterranean, we have to make sure that there aren't forces that are well-funded. For this reason, we will design budget plans for the following years around the needs of our troops. It's going to weigh on the country's economy, but it's a necessary investment in the future of our empire. Hopefully, when our colonies are more pacified, we can start to cut back army spending again. For now, however, we must make sure that our troops have all the money they need for rations, rifles, fuels, equipment, vehicles, ammo, planes, trucks, tanks, and anything else they might need to ensure that some upstart rabble rouser does inflame a revolt that might cause a domino effect and become a serious trouble for us. Our brave soldiers must have the means to always be vigilant, always ready, and always efficient. Keep spending more money, guys. You're doing a great job spending, spending, spending. Just like any government. Spend, spend, spend until you indebt the nation's people for generations to come. Ah, yeah. 
and I guess national blocs. Negotiations within the PNF were continuing to better handle the democratic transition. Eventually, some form of compromise was reached Almirante and De Maranchia, as spearheaded the creation of a coalition that will compete in the democratic race. A somewhat bit tent, a bit tent right wing alliance is made up of moderate fascists, monarchists, and staunch conservatives, and has taken the name of the national blocs or Bielci Nazionali. It largely represents the old ruling class and the current status quo, although it's hard to predict how likely it is to win. It could easily appeal to those who wish for stability and those who are scared of the wave of change currently taking place in the country. I knew a girl with the last name Bielci, actually before, or Blochi. Is it Blochi? Bielci? Whatever. Alba Shabir asked for weapons. With the Reich embroiled in a destructive civil war, each side is trying to get all the possible help to defeat their opponents. Emissaries from Mr. Ahea Alba Shabir, who appears to be the more moderate contender to the mantle of fear, as approach us for help. They state their need for military equipment and promise to remember our help in the future. What, who, what should we answer? Better than Hadrish. Oh, yeah, he's actually doing okay-ish. Not great. Not a bad, my friends. Nothing here yet, and it's time to do another one, shall we? Support the civilians? If we have to. <clears throat> During the fascist period, the state largely relied on the armed forces, especially the MVSN and the Regio Associto, to shore up its political apparatus. Numerous podestas and provisional or provincial administrators, especially in the far reaches of the empire, such as Albania and Slovenia, are still drawn directly from the ranks of the armed forces. New reforms shall be enacted to curtail the role of armed forces in the country, ensuring that the only democratically elected civilians can fill in such roles. This will encourage our young democracy to operate in a free and fair manner for the good of the <clears throat> people. What is this? No divisions of basic training? And that's totally okay. Because right now, what we're going to do is this. You guys looking not too bad, you all. Let's get a little flicker, everyone. We need more and more guns. Uh, actually, anti-tank. Well, the, the great game between us and Germany only happens after they're done with the Civil War, so we should have enough time making ourselves a little better, hopefully. Um, what are we lacking now? Well, it doesn't matter. Let's read the next focus anyways. 75 billion GDP is not bad, and Tricky Dick is gone. Every time that event pops up, I always call him Tricky Dick, because he is Tricky Dick. On the road to success. For this first time, a sense of optimism has started, started to manifest itself amongst the people of Italy. While many politicians and people more than no are somewhat skeptical, the common folk of Italy seems to have finally started to truly appreciate Siena's reforms. Ducci's popularity is reaching levels unseen since Mussolini's glorious days when everyone seems to talk about a single topic, the coming democracy. We shall forever, or we shall kindle and foster the slim of optimism and enthusiasm among the people, for it is a people that shall lead Italy to its future, a people that is just about to freely choose its future for the first time. Um... Oh, for the first time, as many of our young and middle aged have experienced only the fascist regime and fires war. A future of peace and freedom awaits the Italian nation, and our children are eager to build that future. Good for you guys. Everything will be okay. Maybe, maybe not. Observers, both national and international, are still skeptical about our ongoing process of democratization. Some fear that the fires of radicalism will still burn under the ashes and that the country is simply one controversial element or election or two away from disaster. Others believe that the country or hardcore fascists are still strong in the country and are merely biding their time waiting for Siena to retire before they rear their head again. Yet, others are simply afraid that liberalizing the Italian economy will cause a catastrophe catastrophe, which will take a very long time to fix. All of them will be proved wrong in time, but for now, the only thing that we can do is fostering optimism and hopefulness in the future. The coming elections will be celebrated throughout newspapers, and our national propaganda machine will be out in full force, broadcasting to the world our enthusiasm, which stems from the certainty that the elections will be the beginning of a new, great future for Italy. We can only hope that everything goes well. Now, it's interesting that I just thought of something here, that with everything happening here, what the United States, while well, embroiled in their own, you know, issues and such, uh, would not lend out a hand to us as we're trying to democratize. Now, I understand with Tricky Dick resigning and JFK going to get assassinated very, 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 very soon. Like, they see Italy democratizing. Would they not try anything here? In my, from my perspective, it seems like they, they would maybe try something to help out. But, you know what, maybe I'm wrong. Anything gives you anybody anything here? No. Okay, so, Yemen, medium reserve discovered, further prospecting available. Might as well, right? Cool. Everything will be okay. The first order. Uh, the new order. After all these politics and negotiations, the time has almost come. Seattle's days at Duce are now numbered, and an official date for the elections has been set. The Grand Council of Fascism and the Chamber of Fasci and Corporations will soon be dissolved, and the full power will be restored to the Senate and Reformed Chamber of Deputies, both democratically elected. However, the attention of the people and of, of the politicians has turned into a few important debates arising in the Parliament, in which the Duce simply has to resolve before he can retire. The Democratic factions propose a final review of the judiciary system, aimed at removing pol political influence from the judiciary arm of the government, while the politicians of the Blochi Nazionali have set forth an increasing or increased budget and the creation of emergency powers for the army in case of serious civilian unrest. Expanding army support. Oh, I kind of like this one. Versus review the judiciary. 
Capital punishment with penal labor. Do we like penal labor? More stability, penological power. Um, free repair. Hmm. I kind of want to do this one just because combat spooling with advanced training, it gives you even more monthly offer you professionalism change. So we'll do that one. Many of the remaining right-wing politicians, even those that strongly support Siam's view on the democratization of the country, fear that the political radicals of both in Italy and the colonies is a serious problem which is subsided for now, but may return in full force in the immediate future, putting all the Duchess' conquests and reforms at stake. For this reason, we must be ready to rely on our forces, which have always been supporters of Siam's vision, increasing their budget and giving them more emergency powers should the situation in the country or the empire go down a dangerous path. The liberals protest that this could be easily degenerate into a quasi fascist military dictatorship, but it could be our best bet at having a file safe in case of serious trouble. Uh, poverty rate, oh, poverty rate, oh, oh, poverty rate, slowly improves, slowly improves. Military centric budget. Uh, I'm going to go with this side first, and then as much as I want to do army lira bonuses, which I guess us looks like just nothing but benefits, I will do token reforms just because it offset the military influence. So, the second order. The elections are drawing ever closer. The electoral trail is in full swing. Every party has named its candidate. Politicians rally their voters in the six squares of major cities all over the country to hold speeches, while even in the smallest and most isolated towns and villages of Italy, in the evening, everyone gathers around a radio in town squares to listen to radio reports about the coming elections, as everyone, down to the humble farmers and workers, is able to comment, freely express his opinions without fearing repression for the first time in decades. Everything has been going on according to Siam's plans, and now there's only one final push, the one last order to be signed by the Duce before he can step down and let the people choose its next leader. The Bloche Nazionale have proposed a system of bonuses for merit Meritorious commanders and officers of the Regio Esercito, while the Democrazia Cristiana and the Front Democratico have proposed a proposed a series of tiny liberal reforms that shows goodwill on our part. Ordaz, elected president of Mexico. Well, good job, Ordaz. Good job, good job. And then army leader bonuses is cooling up token reforms. A little bit here, a little bit there, nothing truly substantial, but rather something done to send a message. This is what many prominent liberals have proposed on the eve of Siano's retirement. A small loosening of censorship on newspapers, a slight bit of added economic freedom for large businesses, a tiny restriction to the po police's powers, and so on, so forth. Sure, many of these reforms won't even have a real effect on the lives of most Italians, but they sure won't pass unnoticed. The liberals have asked for this merely to test just how far Siano and other fascists are willing to go to see if their newfound love for democracy is real or farce. Immediately, many close advisors to Siano have criticized these demands as illegitimate, saying that all further liberal reforms should be postponed to after the elections and discussed in Parliament. However, it is true that if we don't consent to these reforms, we could easily be criticized because of our unwillingness to go to that extra mile to cooperate with the democratic forces, and that would somewhat sour our political atmosphere we worked so hard to create. We get, oh crap, we get more cost. But actually, this is really good because it gives you better monthly poverty change, as well as improve our immediate monthly poverty societal development rate, and slightly more stability, which is pretty good. Brest is calling from the general chaos of the former pact, and the message from the Brest has reached us. The Breton Republic informs us that they have been broken free of German rule, and amongst the first tasks as a free nation, they have chosen to contact and remember leading world powers. The broadcasts are considered as mere declarations for independence for the international community, not as demands for the recognition of independence for Britain. Despite the chaotic situation in Germany, it remains to be seen that the Bretons could hold another newfound freedom. Congratulations, I suppose. And Il Duce's democracy. Finally, the day has arrived. Galizio Siano, for the last time, has stepped onto the balcony of Palazzo Venezia, the very same balcony which Mussolini gave so many speeches, and addressed the people of Italy for the last time as Duce. The square was packed with people, as a massive crowd with enormous Italian flags and banners praising the Duce for waving in the wind. Siano was for often forgotten or forced to interrupt his speech for long rounds of applause and cheering. As he spoke out to the people, he praised fascism and his glorious history, but also remarked the need for a renewed Italian democracy, one that would lift the country to ever greater heights. The authoritarian elements of fascism were used in the past, but I burden now and had to be re removed if Italy were to keep its greatness in the future. As he ended his long speech and disappeared into the palace for the last time, the applause and cheering was even louder and longer. Then slowly, the silence fell, and as people started to slowly realize what had happened, and had asked themselves a the question, now what will happen? Ooh, painting fascism, good. Look at all the stuff that improves, great. Tom screened by Central Siberia, how great. Well, everyone, it's time for the gift of democracy. It was almost complete the project that would be Umberto's legacy and that of Siano, whether the latter was proud of the distinction or not. A workable democratic system and carefully planned out mythology. But the transition had been plotted out. Now, all that was left was to wait, and the unbearable silence that moments such as this carried and the hope for the best. The king had decided that he would spend the moment on his own for the best, to the best of his ability. When he managed to get away from his hangers, hangers on, he lingered in a balcony, looking out over his Rome. As the lights of the evening began to turn on, it was always beautiful, the most beautiful city on earth, thought the king. And today would change for the better, although you would not know to look at it. Despite Siano's doubts, which he continued to express to his majesty even today, Umberto had faith in his people. Forty years ago, his father had given Mussolini the keys to the power, and now the son would return those keys to the people, to do with them whatever they chose. Perhaps they would choose wrong, but Umberto had more faith in them than that. They had received the gift of democracy, and whatever happened next, that meant that something. 
And that meant something. The king stayed to look down into his gritty, into his city, into it grew dark. I'm getting my pronunciations worked, uh, like, incorrect, as I just, literally just did right there. It's weird, because as I'm reading this, like, I will say words that appear in the next sentence without even me knowing it. Like, my eyes are just, like, taking everything in without my brain real realizing things. But, our mandate secure. During Siano's early reforms, a handful of OFN experts were secretly granted access by the duchy to observe the nation's reforms and advise the government on how, they, how to best proceed. This is what I was talking about. They found that the reforms in the words were more imaginary and real, and... It seemed des designed to satiate the Italian public rather than to effect real change. Though the advisors were dismissed in a huff, they weren't wrong. In the early stages of the Italian spring, Siano and his underlings had to proceed with the purest caution unless they tread on the wrong toes and send their nation spiraling into chaos now, though. The future seems far more assured. The fascist party was won over at Verona, and its people have chosen Siano's vision of the future over the sad nostalgia of Scorzo, the inept hallucinations of Curcio, or the madness of Faranici. Faranacci. From now on, the reforms will proceed, and the true potential of the Italian eagle will be unleashed. Let's hope that it will be a good eagle. Not a bad eagle, but a good eagle. More guns, how shall we? And this takes actually quite a few days, huh? Not bad, not bad. Let's cut the spending. Let's cut, 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 for now. Not bad, my friends. We're going to build, 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 build until we can't build anymore, and then build some more, and then when we can't build after that, we'll, we might build some more. So, a colonial aid. Unrest strikes Egypt during another lavish party. King Farouk has died of a heart attack thanks to an exorbitant amount of meat that he had eaten during his reign. Mmm, I love meat. Well, the death of Farouk, as celebrated across Egypt, has nonetheless been a catalyst for even more widespread disorder than during his reign. Thus, a new government of Egypt has inquired Italy for aid to help stabilize the country. Currently, the Italian government has sent a number of options available in helping Egypt. Or has a number of options. Firstly, Italy can send Egypt some economic aid, making sure that Egypt has the money necessary to enact some stopgap measures. While this won't do much to improve the situation in Egypt, it'll be easy to sever ties with Egypt should things get out of hand. Secondly, an Italian military force can be sent to Egypt. This force will be helped in keeping the order in the most important parts of the kingdom while the Egyptian government focuses on rebuilding. However, it'll be difficult to recall those troops if things get awry. Thirdly, we could fully commit to stabilizing Egypt, sending economic and military aid. While this will greatly help the T Egyptian government and stabilize the country, it'll basically be impossible to get out of the dodge get out of dodge if the country somehow spires out of control. Of course, the last option is not to do nothing at all. We will basically abandon the, our colony, but if the unrest right now is a sign of things to come, then getting the heck out of dodge would maybe even be preferable. Now that the options lay on the table, it's time to make a decision. The Italian government eventually decided to do nothing. <laughs> mm, do nothing. Cool. Roll back the party, boys! The PNF is a dominant party in Italy and enjoys unquestioned influence over Italy. In order to reform into a democracy, we need to weaken the country's or the influence that the PNF has over the country. We need to begin slowly stripping away the powers of the PNF as countrywide, such as the control over all politicians. We also need to start weakening the power of the Grand Council of Fascism. This will may face much backlash, especially from Scorza's faction, but these moves are necessary so Italian democracy can truly rise up and show the world its greatness. So, controlled opposition becomes a multi-party system, ideology drift defense, daily political power gain. It is what it is. We must do what we must. Ah, uh, survey for a project. Good idea. Test our work. Very good idea. And we shall go ahead and do anything else here. Not seeing too much here. Um, so, Algeria is completely done. Let's see. Kuwait is completely done. Where's Kuwait? I don't see it. Uh, let's see. Is it about Libya? It says Libya. Finish off working in Libya? Sure, why not? Eloquent like reserves. Don't mind if we do. Less than 20 billion in debt. Ah, democratic reforms are doing quite well. I thought we already had 75 billion, but I guess it went down, huh? And the organization. Loosening the noose. Ooh, that hurts us. Ooh, it'll get more political power, but more cost? No, thank you. And the electorate. If we're ever going to return a country into a proper democracy, we have to start changing the way our government deals with our people. We shall address this problem by ending compulsory membership of the party for the government officials, eliminating the restrictions on cultural and artistic production in the country, and removing the personality cult that is formed around Mussolini and Siano. Our long-term goal is to liberalize the daily lives of the Italian people. Democracy is useless if we can't convince the population that things are truly about to change. If we don't have to clarify that, we're simply going to end up with another dictatorship sooner rather than later. Uh, see, there was one comment saying from yesterday saying that we should join the OFN. And, of course, win the German-Italian games. Uh, yeah, that's probably the goal for us in this campaign. We, we should probably join the OFN and such. Uh, you guys, oh, that's quite a while before we're done there, so that's fine. And compulsory membership. Dissolve the ministry. Austin is going crazy. Actually, at the time of recording, when uh, the future updates for TNO for Austin are going to be just crazy. There's going to be, like, a devastation mechanic or something, which sounds like a lot of fun. Well, maybe not for Austin, but that's okay. Academic base and research facilities. Oh, yeah. Mussolini isn't always right. Remove, remove Umberto's power. 
Oh, oh, it's, ooh. A de not democratic commerce, huh? Ooh, do we want to do that? I was recommended not to do that. Ooh. Um, open up the franchise and the monopoly. Ooh, poverty rate. Yeah, that's not bad. Open up the squares. Uh, before we go too far, I just want to see if there's anything else here. XL scores, though. The echo that wins in Austin. That's not a bad idea. Remove the uneducated. Yeah. Dissolve the black shirts. Not a bad idea. Send them home. Hand them over. Open up the party. Okay. I would like to get down maybe here first. So, we'll end compulsory membership. So... Membership in the PNF has been mandatory for basically everything in Italy. One cannot be employed, seek public office, or obtain government assistance without party membership, and that does not even begin to show the social stigma of not being part of the party. Of course, if we are to reform into a democracy, we cannot maintain these laws. We must roll back these rules so that other parties can exist and have power in Italy. No longer will one need to be part of the PNF in order to keep a job or run for office. We should begin a campaign to make people not stigmatize those who don't join the PNF. The people may not be forced to join a party they may disagree with, if they don't want to. These reforms will make Italy's pastime as a one-party state a thing of the past. Which would be a great thing. Dissolve the popular ministry. Ooh, does this hurt our budget? No, it does not. Uh, let's do this one. Dissolve the ministry of popular culture. The Ministerio della Cultura Popolare, also known as its silly abbreviation Min Col Pop, was originally designed as a way to centralize the cultural and artistic production of fascist Italy into the hands of a single state controlled entity. However, soon enough, competition with other similar organs, corruption, and sheer inefficiency turned what was meant to be Italy's response to Goebbels' propaganda machine into a bloated bureaucratic monster, a useless waste of money and resources which does nothing but give unnecessary trouble to artists, directors, and writers and journals all over Italy. We will shift some of Min Col's Pop's tasks to the much more efficient and transparent Ministry of National education, which will be made into an intermediary between the government and the Italian cultural industry, while finally dissolving this relic of a bygone era, age or era and age once and for all. This will fundamental. This will be a fundamental step in liberalizing Italian culture and, of course, arts. All right, very good. Spend more, cut down the budget, slash the debt. I mean, very good, very good. Burn the party papers. Fascist Italy has, over the years, built up a large amount of less than savory documents, one would say. These documents include things from dossiers on political enemies to inform that would incriminate any or many people in the government. Even though some people in the government will probably be removed when the transition to democracy is complete, we still need to handle these controversial documents so that our early democracy does not become rack of scandals. The obvious best solution is to burn the documents on secret, removing any trace of the info. We can easily ma mask it by saying it was not more than someone accidentally dropping a lit cigarette or something along those lines. It may be a bit suspicious, but we can brush off those suspicions so that we can build a better Italy. Yeah, we had just, you know, one guy just dropped a cigarette and 10,000 pieces of paper were burned. You know, it happens. And once with that, we'll attack the p personality cult. Well, as a personality cult around the Duce is nowhere near what it was once was, it's still a powerful part of Italian propaganda. Both are declaring the greatness of the Duce are commonplace, and the people that find themselves in disagreement with the idea that Mussolini or even Siano are the greatest leaders on the planet tend to be beaten up or even lynched in some cases. However, these old horrible times are over. A personality cult will not work well with their nascent democracy as any party that comes into power will merely wish to restore the Duce to being the leader of the party. Despite, or besides, despite what many be to believe, or may believe, Benito Mussolini was not a perfect man, and he in fact had many flaws. We must move to begin to show the truth of how the Duce is not a god amongst men, but a normal person who does in fact make mistakes. This probably will spark much outrage, especially from the hardliner fascists, but we shall be able to weather it, as Verona has shown that the hardliner ideals are not the true way forward for Italy. Oh, yes. 64? Not bad. Grab some of stew. And since we do have mountaineers, finally, and as much as I want to use air assault, I mean, we can still research it, but... Eh, we'll see. Eh, we'll do it anyways. We might as well research it, right? We might as well. Burn the party papers. Burn them. Burn them all. Oh, look at that mapper. Not very good. We should take a look at our social development, too. Oh, we have military austerity, too. That doesn't help. Uh, let's take a look. Anything here? Nope. Actually, how about anything here? Probably. Yep. That is fine. How is construction going? Looking not too bad arenos, I would say so myself. Uh, actually, let's take a look. So, wow, secondary schooling, 6.75, not bad. Modern research facilities. Oh, we have modern research facilities already? Not bad. Blue size academia is next. Military academia, so that's not too bad. Modern agriculture is kind of stagnant. Poverty rate is going up by three. Not bad, actually. Industrial equipment, industrial expertise. Army professionalism is going up by five a month. I love it. I love it, love it, love it, love, love, love it. Mussolini is always right. Well, I think it was this one we want to go down next, right? Yeah. 
and the organization. The Digio has to face the fact that the greatest threat to his project is his own party. Even if Sianos finally achieved domination of the PNF, the very existence of this party will be a ticking time bomb in the new Italian system, which could be easily or could easily threaten its newborn democracy. For this reason, we will have to make sure that the National Fascist Party will not be a threat for a new system in the foreseeable future. First, we shall clamp down on extremism one last time, hopefully pushing the moderate fascists into even more moderate positions. Then, we will fully dissolve the black shirts, absorbing them into the Regio Associto. Finally, we shall reform the internal rules of the party to make sure it more transparent and democratic. Perhaps these reforms will be even harder to push than those regarding the national institutions, as we will attack the remaining fascist hardliners inside the very home. However, so we simply can't half booty this, otherwise we risk all of our efforts being for naught. Good idea. Anything else here? I love cutting down the budget. Or I keep saying budget. It's debt, 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 debt. That D word. Expel the hardliners. Every party has its liberalizers and its hardliners. In all but the most totalitarian of political systems. And for all of its posturing as an un entirely unified party, the PNF is no exception, as the proceedings in Verona showed only so clearly. In order to press his agenda forward, the Duce must strike ruthlessly at the hardliners in the, in the PNF, finding those whose words betray a complete disagreement with its ideas. And there can be a reconciliation with the most of the party's ranks and followers, so the Duce hopes. These men are nothing but obstacles rooted in a bygone age. These men shall be cast into the political wilderness and eliminated as a threat once and for all. A fanfare of attention and statements from Sierra Siano's allies in the party. We'll make it clear that the party is ours and we shall do with it as Siano wills. Listening the news. From the day Mussolini marched on Rome, fascism, even extreme forms practiced by the German Reich and its spawn, had become a mainstream ideology, pre prevalent in every facet of Italian society. No more clearly could this be seen in the Italian Empire that sole le legal partner or political party, the Partito Nazionale Fascista. Through their dominance over Italian politics, they had endured that fascism would reign un unimpeded throughout all of Italy. The Duce knew that any marginally successful attempt at democracy would need to limit the all-encompassing power the party enjoyed over the Italian, uh, Italian Empire's politics. This task, however, was an enormous challenge. The party would resist any and all attempts to reveal its power, even if it said attempts were coming directly from the Duce. Regardless, the news was which currently rests over any prospective Italian democracy would need to be removed with expediency and care. Anything less, and the result would be a simple rebranding of the fascist regime of Siano thought for a moment. Of course, to begin, he would be required to remove the more extreme proponents of fascism in his party, the hardliners. They should be cast off into the unknown, and their ideals with them. Then, of course, annoyances such as scores would have to be dealt with. He had a few, if he called it, fun ideas in that regard. Finally, the threat posed by the Milizia Voluntaria per la Securezza Nacional, or alternatively, the Black Shirts. <clears throat> We need to be eliminated. The militia's efforts were no longer needed, and their desperate attempts to sustain the regime, though through harassing and even killing political dissidents, only served to hamper any potential growth of democracy in the Italian Empire. The Duce perched on a windowsill overlooking Rome. No doubt this would be a long and arduous task, but in time the party would fall. He felt a pang of sadness knowing that he would be destroying the very thing he brought, brought him power and he now wields, but he knew well that he would be willing to do whatever was necessary to achieve the safety and security of Italia, ending fascism one step at a time. Democratizing Italy is, is a little bit more fun, in my opinion, right now than trying to play as fascist Italy. Fascist Italy is cool and all, but I don't know. It's I can do that one too. Why not? It was all right. Just scores is reforms are a bit crazy. Goring is going to win. Oh God, no. So sco scores was fun. It's a little crazy. I wish I abolished taxation at the end of it, but whatever. You know. It was fun. Exile Scorza. Despite the fact that Scorza's ideas were clearly defeated at the Congress of Verona, it seems he's, he has to have a belief that hardline fascism is the future for Italy. Well, it'd be great if Italy could just ignore Scorza. The idea he represents is still much too attractive to, to too many people. It is obvious that we need to find a way to handle Scorza so we cannot continue to spew his outdated ideas. We cannot arrest him or just have the Blackshirts go after him, as he is still too much powerful for that. No, we shall promote him into the army role and ship him off to some other place to squash a rebellion or something along those lines. He cannot complain, as he was once an army lieutenant, and rejecting this role may look at... May, may make it look like he does not approve of our army, which would create his support. Once Scorza is in, is in this army role, he can, we can begin to properly sideline his supporters or even turn them into pro-democracy advocates, so when he does eventually retire or return to Italy, he will have no base to support to claim his claims that fascism is the future for Italy. Cool. That is the most worthless thing here in TNO. Just five world goals times. <laughs> That's alright. It's meant to be. And for the project, 43% is not bad. After this, we shall remove the uneducated. I love that. As the great crises of the 50s rocked Italy, more and more people were chosen for positions purely based on ideology over education. The belief always was that even if one lacked education, their patriotic zeal and superior fascist ideology would make up for it, and that anyone who was a true believer could not be truly incompetent. Thus, or this, as we have sadly seen, is blatantly false. The various government departments whose leaders were chosen by the system have turned into monk money sinks to rival Africa 
uh, Oriental Italia, we, or Italiana. We need to remove these people chosen through this nepotism and replace them with well-educated leaders. We need to do this, however, in a slow and steady manner, as a hardliner fascist factions will say that Siano is purging the Italian government of true, hard-working Italians. We can use that many... We can use the many complaints filed by superiors and inferiors of the uneducated leaders that were ignored in the past. Thankfully, with the loosening of restrictions, the educated people who may have not been willing to work with the government due to their opposition to the old fascist regime should, due to our prior reforms, be much more happy and content working in government positions. Not much new academic base? Yeah, that seems pretty good. School says, new job. Oh, end of the South African War. Good job, guys. Good job. No matter who wins, good job. It's a faction shatters attempt... T attempted coup on the PNF. Squalls has been much quieter since the Verona Conference or Congress. Stepping down from his position as Secretary of the PNF and being content to live as just another fascist uniform among many others. However, in his wisdom, the Duchess decided that Squalls' talent was wasted in Italy and decided to assign him to a delicate and important diplomatic position as an ambassador to the Caribbean island nation of St. Kitts and Nevis. Great idea. Behaving like a proper fascist, Squalls did not question the order coming from the Duchess and quietly accepted his duty. In his formal letter to him, Siano urged him to show his devotion to the Italian nation and to the fascist cause by carrying out this task of the utmost geopolitical importance. Squalls will have to safeguard and uphold the Italian interests in the islands, making sure that the flame of the fascist revolution shines a slight even half a world away. Oh, what the heck happened here? Since Yano knew that Scorza would be so eager to complete this task, he didn't wait too long to send him on his way. This also meant that the few friends and associates Scorza still had in the PNF knew of this departure only when he was inside a plane above the Atlantic Ocean. But sometimes such things are inevitable. The whole nation of Italy places its hopes in Scorza, and his population will surely devote their thoughts to him and his mission. So long and good luck. Good, good luck. Beautiful. So what happened down here? Levantine Confederate. They became Social Democrats under Yasir Arafat. Oh, they're not under us anymore. God dang it, you pieces of garbage. And what happened to the thing about the Greeks? Like, what happened with these? They're just independent now? I know, I know they're getting a focus tree, unique focus tree, but, like, it just it, everything just stopped with them. Big sadness, breaking my heart. Dissolve the black shirts is probably a good idea. The, the black shirts are have been a major arm of the Italian government. They've been used to threaten, harass, or even kill political opponents of the fascist regime. Those times, however, were different times. The ideas of a free democracy were attacked and strangled by the black shirts. We cannot maintain such an organization if we are to create a working democracy as the black shirts will merely attack those who promote radical ideas. We shall follow the black shirts into the Regio Esercito. Many will be saddened by the end of such a glorious organization, but we must remind the Italian people of what happened to the black shirts after the Second World War. They became nothing more than drunken rabble-rousers. Italy must look to the future, and black shirts have become nothing more than the old relic of the past. Send them home. Hand them over. Oh boy, you know what? I will let you guys decide. Should we send them home? Or should we just hand them over? Let me know in the comments below. In which we will continue with other decisions here. And the government? Oh, I don't want more costs, but if I have to, in the government. The true meat of Siano's reforms lie in the sweeping changes made to the laws and functioning of the Italian state. Our aim is not only to dismantle the fascist organization, but to set up a system of checks and balances that will make sure some, that our democracy isn't swallowed again after some time by, from, from some party. Be it fascist, communist, or worse, manages to achieve a large majority in parliament. For this reason, we will completely remove the king's power to intervene in Italian politics, and then we shall reform the executive by eliminating the Grand Council, and finally we shall democratize the parliament, thus removing all vestiges of the fascist state and the Italian government. These changes will be the hardest and most controversial part of Siano's whole project, but if we manage to push through all these, the worst will surely have been pa uh, passed. Cool. And there goes Bowman. Oh, crap. Goring actually did win. Well, that is not very good, I would say so myself. So let's put some dudes up here, because uh, he, there's a chance he could attack us. There is a good chance. Hopefully it doesn't come to pass, but hey, Logistics Wizard, don't mind me. Let's be offensive. The fat man wins the German Civil War. That is not good for anyone here. Less than 16 billion in the government. Not bad. And when's our technology done? Eh, not soon enough. So, after this, restore the chamber. Remove Umberto's power. Well, we don't want to abolish monarchy, but we, we, maybe, maybe remove a little bit of power. You know, you see, just, just a little bit of power. Uh, funding for the Casa per el Mezzogiorno will go up, bringing closer to renovations. Just away the exterior, huh? Does this hurt our... Ooh. Oh, this replaces people. Ooh, consumer goods. Uh, ooh, I don't like that. And the Monopoly. Oh, I like that a lot, though. Oh, oh, I like that a lot, too. Oh, we got to restore the Chamber of Deputies. In 1939, the Italian lower house was suppressed and replaced by the Chamber of Fasci and Corporations, a non-elected legislative organ which was made up of members of the Grand Council and other several key fascist figures, including the heads of the economic corporations. It's imperative that such an or organ is dissolved and a new democratically elected Chamber of Deputies is created to be elected democratically. 
To put an additional safeguard for democracy, we will create a regime of the per perfect bicameralism, meaning that the chamber and the senate will share the same responsibilities and same level of powers. That way, governments will need a majority in both houses to p pass laws and change the statute, making it significantly harder for single parties to dominate politics. And LBJ is one in the United States. Well, good luck, LBJ. Open up the Senate. The Senate, at least by upper house, was the only major governmental organ that was left relatively untouched by Mussolini's fascist reforms. However, Mussolini exploited the fact that, according to the Albertine statute, senators could be nominated for life directly by the king. Thus, in order to ensure domination of the Senate, Laduce simply strong armed the king to appoint senators, which were in reality selected by him. For starters, we shall remove the king's ability to appoint senators. Like, secondly, we'll make sure that the current uh, senators for life, who is appointed by the king, have their status removed when the Senate is reformed but after the election. This reset is necessary to make sure that the transition to democracy is actually transparent without old fascist senators appointed long ago so clinging to their seats in the Senate until the end of their lives. Cyril Nash is a democratic camera. The Italian lower house since 1939 represented the, the camera di fasci e della corporazione, a non-elected assembly made up of important representatives of the regime. In theory, it was supposed to be a main organ of the fascist political edifice, but in practice, it was filled by yesmen who did nothing more than put a rubber stamp on Mussolini's orders. Siano's demand of the dissolution of the camera di fasci or the, you know, fascist organization commerce camera, which will be replaced by democratically elected camera di deputati. The new camera will function in tandem with the Senate and a regime of perfect bicameralism. This reforms was put in place by Sianos to ensure that in order to change laws, any party must hold a majority in both upper and lower chamber of parliament. It's clear that Sianos' goal isn't simply to dismantle fascism, but also make sure that it doesn't come back anytime soon. Another key element of the fascist regime disappears from Italy to be replaced by a democratic legislative body. Some are already starting to get r ready for the new elections. Men are still skeptical about Siano's democratization of the country, but there's no denying that the Duce wants to see it through the end. Siano is a determined man, it appears to be. Which is a good thing to have. Sometimes to have good, de good determined men. I could expand this, but no. I, I almost never go down that path. That was some better uh, artillery. Thank you very much. Opening up the Senate, and we remove Umberto's power. Uh, the Albertine Statute, Italy's constitutional law, has been written in 1848, more than 100 years ago. It was noted, however, for being a flexible constitution, which means that the laws that make up the statute can be changed relatively easily, unlike those of the constitutions of several other countries, such as that of the U.S. This, for example, allowed Mussolini to simply change the statute in order to legally turn Italy from a democratic state into a fascist one. However, many lawmakers and jurists in Italy have pointed out that many laws of the statute simply imply that the king has largely large legal powers in the Italian government, and while historically the crown is mostly stayed out of political life, or more recently was effectively a fancy rubber stamp for Mussolini, these parts of the statute are loaded gun pointed directly at the nascent democracy. A functioning democratic state simply cannot run the risk of legally turning back into authoritarian monarchy if the King Alberto or one of his successors decide that they don't like the political state of our country. Thus, we need to modify the statute and add safeguards to make sure that the King of Italy can only play a ceremonial symbolic role without influencing the political life of our country. The reset of the Senate. The Senate. One of the few pre fascist political organi organisms that was left mostly untouched by Mussolini's restructuring of Italian politics. It is still, however, a pad full by senators for life. Appointed by the former Duce, remarkably, in just 1939, 212 people were made senators from a decree signed by the king, who was strong armed by Mussolini Siano. By Mussolini Siano has ordered that all senators for life will lose their status after the coming elections and that ensuring his full reset of the Senate. No exceptions were made to this rule. In order to avoid adding even more controversy to a decision that's already extremely divisive, the Senate, as the upper chamber of the Italian kingdom, is the most prestigious and respected political body of the state. Siano has, however, remarked multiple times that there can be no democracy if the upper chamber is still packed with non-democratically elected representatives by now. It is pretty much certain that the date of the election will be announced soon, and several parties and political movements are already starting to form as a different strata and groups of Italian society start to look for those who can protect their interests. International media are still amazed at Siano's push toward democracy, and the first such case in a fascist country, out with the old, in with the new, do we have any debt to get rid of? Not yet. And is all the Grand Council. Galizio Siano's never lacked courage, nor the willingness to seize history with both hands and act. Yet, the Duce himself is aware of the magnitude of this decision. To dissolve the, council grand, the Grand Council fascism, the main governing body of the fascist Italian country since the 20s, is to break forever with the path laid out by Benito Mussolini and his legacy. To do so is to question the very idea of fascism, the very idea of what it means to govern Italy since the weak pre-fascist state was cast aside. Oh, Mr. Old Wilson, hello. And yet, for the sake of Italy, it must be done. For the refa refashioning of the Italian nation. For the sake of Italy's elderly newborn children, in the name of, the of a present and future which will be, must be different. The Grand Council is no more than a different Italy will be born, and born of it will be, for this is what the Duce has decided it shall be done. The King's Speech. In a speech broadcast by through national radio, His Majesty King Umberto II di Savoia, King of Italy, Emperor of Ethiopia, First Marshal of the Empire, has spoken about the recent modifications of the Albertine Statute, Italy's constitutional law. In particular, the King gracefully accepted and welcomed the new limitations imposed by the law on his person, and swore to comply with them in order to follow the will of the Italian nation which I serve. 
In particular, the recent modifications imposed by Ciano and agreed upon by King Umberto removed the king's power to appoint ministers to dissolve parliament and make it impossible for his majesty to veto laws in parliament. From now on, unless these new laws are changed again by parliament, the king will effectively lose all political power in Italy and will continue existing as a mere figurehead. It was already well known that Umberto II wasn't very engaged with political matters of the kingdom, and that he enjoyed mutual trust and relationships and friendships with Ciano. However, few would have speculated the king would willingly renounce all political power for him and his descendants. Strangely, this news has been welcomed by both the left and the right wing, as many factions still hold true to the original Republican ideals of the PNF. Monarchies are, of course, a relic of the past. We must repeal the Acerbo laws, though. The Acerbo laws, named for their proponent, Giacomo Acerbo, were the means by which Mussolini gave the PNF a majority in the fallen, or the Italian, parliament, allowing fascism to solidify its hold over Italy. Yet, the path Duce Siano was placed over country on requires the removal of these laws as a monumental example of fascism's destruction of parliamentary democracy and forcibly repealing the Acerbo law, or laws. We shall make it impossible to image or imagine in Italy where proportional representation and the will of the people is once more the guiding principle of political life, symbolically. Sim symbolically. The repeal of these laws will give an ample demonstration that Seattle's promise to democratize is genuine. Pragmatically, the repeal is necessary before any proportional system can begin to be constructed. Nice. And I'm sorry if I'm talking a little bit quickly, it's just because I want to push this campaign a little bit further ahead, so. Oh, I bet you things. Why not? There we go. I love it. Less than 14 billion, my friends. Less than 14 billions. Ah, oh, the end of the Grand Consiglio. Today, Siena has passed what might be his most controversial law, the one that would dissolve the Grand Consiglio del Fascismo, the most important executive body of the fascist regime. The Grand Council of Fascism won't be the only organism that will be dissolved, but with it, the various fascist unions and syndicates, the MVSN and several others will be eliminated. This is so far the most serious and decisive blow that Siena has dealt to the fascist power structure, effectively striking at the heart of the fascist regime in the name of a renewed democracy, of course. Many conservative and pro-fascist representatives voiced harsh dissent, but the news that were welcomed by a large strata of Italian society, which are largely in favor of Siano's reforms. The Grand Council will be replaced by a cabinet of ministers appointed by a prime minister who will in turn be elected by a parliament. This is the first serious step towards the creation of a new democratic order in Italy, and the media speculate that it is only a matter of time before elections of full democratization come to the country. It was about time. And the monopoly. The PNF has completed do completely dominated Italian politics for nearly 40 years. After successfully removing their enemies, there has been no opposition to its rule. Now that we are restoring Italian democracy, there are many who want nothing more than to maintain the PNF as a fixture in national politics. However, if we were to do this, then it would only be a matter of time before the PNF are elected and restart the whole cycle of, un of ending democracy. The only way to make sure that Italy can actually become a functioning democracy is to totally dissolve the PNF and end its monopoly over Italian politics. A drastic move, perhaps, and one that will also be incredibly controversial, but a necessary one so that the PNF uses their influence to win every election, making Italian democracy a joke. We must not allow that to happen. And actually, it's good. Oh, cut, cut. Beautiful, my friends. And actually, I want to take a look at this real quick. Build, and we're starting to build up in other places, too, which is not terrible. What do we have over here? Fund the project. Sounds good to me. 47%. Not bad. And opening up the franchise. It has not been a democracy in a very long time, and it shows there are many teething problems that we have encountered in the process of forging a new form of government. The most recent is the fact that we have incredibly restricted voting rights. Women can only vote for local elections, and seeing even a single woman elected to office is impossible in the current climate. We need to change these frankly archaic laws so that all the people of Italy can have their voices heard, not only half of them. Oh, let's go to this as well, maybe. Test our work. And... Prospect in Greece. Greece. Reserves unknown. Well, it's probably going to come back in failure, but that's okay. And chisel away the exterior. Up until now, the Italian government has maintained an air of perfection. Even recently, as we admitted to small problems and rolled back the cult of personality, the belief that the Italian government is perfect is still very prevalent in the Italian populace. Although it may leave many in shock and throw the hardliners into a state of outrage, we will admit to all our failures, yes. We have repressed our people and done horrible things to our enemies, yes. The Italian army is nowhere near innocent and has done horrible things, yes. The problems of the past decades are not solely attributable to Atlantrop and Germany, but to the government's incompetence as well. Even more, we will apologize to not just the victims of tragedy in the Balkans or Africa, but to the Italian populace for making a fascist system, fascist system that has failed them. Let's not, let's not be too honest here, though. You know, sometimes it's good to be honest, but, you know, we might not want to be honest 100% all the time. Seriously, our debt, is, our GDP keeps going down, it looks like. It's just slightly below $74 billion. And we should also do Mussolini isn't always right, my friends. 
Uh, Mussolini is, without a shadow of a doubt, the most important man in, history, in recent Italian history, and so far the fascist state has done its best to make this example, or this clear fact, or simple fact, as clear as possible for everyone. Textbooks for school children, praise, and monuments in his image have been built in massive numbers all over the country, and towns and places have been named after him. It's regarded as a sort of savior, a hero for his people who never really did anything wrong. It's while it's nice for the people to have someone to look up to, the aura of perfection built around Mussolini has made many people, especially in the uneducated underclasses, instinctively distrustful or distrust of democratizing reforms of Siano. If democracy is so great, then why did Mussolini remove it, they wonder. We must begin to install the radical idea that perhaps Mussolini wasn't an infallible prophet, but just a human like everyone else. Sure, a great leader that did everything he could to make his country great, but it's still human. And laws made by humans have to be changed when the time requires it. And we shall finish with opening up the squares. The true freedom of speech, while common in nations such as America, it's not much more than a rumor here in Italy. Protests and assembly are allowed, but they always seem to end up supporting the Italian government or the PNF in the end. A true democracy requires one to be able to state their opinions without fear or vanishing in the night, only to commit suicide with two bullets to the back of the head. That sounds a little bit too loose to modern politics by a certain somebody. Anyways, furthermore, the people should have the right to de congregate and assemble in the squares, which shall loosen the laws on protest and assembly so that people can truly be free, not only in name, and so that different ideas can spread amongst the populace. His name was Seth Rich. Anyways, uh, yeah. Boost it up, boost it up. I love it. Siano speaks to the Grand Consiglio. Today, Siano is taking the floor in Palazzo of Venezia to address the Grand Consiglio del Fascismo in a speech that was strictly kept secret from the national media. As spoken, Siano criticized Mussolini's tenure as Duce, underlining key aspects with which undermined the Italian state. Siano moved on, of course, to criticize several aspects of the current fascist state and, and the necessity of them immediately being changed. The Duce mentioned the cult of personality around his figure and that of most of his predecessors is excessively authoritarian or oppressive measures taken by fascism against political opponents, a lack of transparency and accountability in many fascist institutions, and the forced Italianization of linguistic and cultural minorities. All these factors, according to Siano, have kept Italy from achieving its full potential as a free nation, and must be addressed if we wish our nation to prosper into the future. The speech was partially leaked to the press and caused much discussion among both supporters and opposers of Siano. At this point, the writing is clearly on the wall, and it is apparent that the Duce wants to at least partially dismantle the system that he's been the leader of. International observers agreed that this might be the beginning of the end for this fascist state, possibly leading to the dawn of a new democratic era. Who could have imagined it? But regardless, I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. Looks like Comey won, and I'll see you all tomorrow, when we shall hopefully further democratize Italy and actually have free elections. Thanks for watching, have a great Italian rest of your day.